in this episode, I'm going to walk you through a full demo of SharePoint's advanced management features, an optional add-on that I gotta say is looking pretty good. Check it out. Hey everyone, Andy here. So nice to see you and I really do appreciate you joining me. On today's episode, I'm gonna check out Microsoft SharePoint's advanced management features and including a full demo and walkthrough of all of those new features. Now, they say that technology never sleeps and indeed Microsoft have been very busy with lots of new features here, many of which have been requested by customers like yourselves. So I thought I'd, uh, I would take you through them and see what you think. Um, just to mention, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I would love it if you would come and join my learning community that I'm trying to build out. So bump that subscribe button up there and ring that bell and come and join us. And if you have questions about this, or in fact, any of my other sessions, get them down below and I'll do my best for you. Now, I also run a Patreon site, so if you'd like to show a little extra love, we have special content for our Patreon subscribers, which includes full courses, enhanced versions of episodes, as well as monthly Zoom calls and more. So check out details below. So I think without any further ado, I think it's about time we jump in and check out SharePoint Advanced Management. So I'm kicking off here in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center and I'm scrolling down and I'm gonna come into SharePoint Online. Now I've already gone ahead and uh, joined the uh, Advanced Management Program. Now if you haven't signed up for this, uh, there is currently a free trial so you can click onto it and you can try it out. Um, once you've tried it, or once you've activated it, I should say, uh, you need to go ahead and ad uh, assign an advanced management license to your users. Now, just to mention, um, as part of the sign-up process, you do need to give a credit card. However, this is just for identity purposes and you're not actually billed. So just to let you know about that. Um, now, as you can see, we have all of these features and essentially you'll get a whole bunch of shortcuts here that will take you through. Um, without the license, it just takes you through to the docs on learn.microsoft.com. But here you'll actually get through to the actual tools. So let's have a look at what the changes are. First of all, I'm going to come into my policies here. And you can see that as well as sharing policy and access control policy, we also have a new feature here called site lifecycle management. So in here, um, I now have the opportunity to create a lifecycle management policy. So I'm gonna go ahead with that. So you can see here, uh, one of the most common things about uh, SharePoint, of course, is that every time you create a Microsoft 365 group or a team, it also creates a SharePoint site. And this can be a real pain if the team or the group kind of just abandon the project and you've got tons and tons of these uh, stale sites. So this is particularly useful for that. So I'm going to click on next and uh, it basically says here, um, how long with the last activity should the site be considered inactive? So here you can choose either a month, couple of months, three months, uh, six months. So in this case, I'm going to choose 90 days. And then it says, okay, what type of sites should be checked for inactivity? Now you can choose classic sites. And these are the old kind of SharePoint classic sites that we had previously. Uh, you've got communication sites, group connected sites without teams. So if you recently signed up for Microsoft 365, you'll know that Teams is no longer included, but you do get a site. So this includes Microsoft 365 without any kind of connected Teams and vice versa. You've got team sites without Microsoft 365 groups. So this is... For example, if you create a direct team from within Microsoft Teams, for example. 
Um, you've also got Teams connected sites. So these are sites that have actually been upgraded from a Microsoft 365 group to a Microsoft team. Now, for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to go ahead and select all of those. Now, you can also uh, filter the site by creation source as well. So again, um, where exactly, so is it, for example, Teams, is it uh, SharePoint PNP? This is PowerShell, of course. This is the PNP, the PowerShell module for SharePoint. Do you want to do the SharePoint Admin Center or the SharePoint Home? Um, I'm not going to bother with that one just now. I can also, of course, include any specific sites. And you can see here that it's picked up sensitive sites or suggested sensitive sites. So for example, HR, finance, uh, things like that. Again, for the purpose of this demo, I'm just gonna accept it. I can also name my policy now. So I'm just gonna call this my Oslo uh, SP policy. And again, you can put in a little description. It's always a good idea um, to try simulation. I'm a big fan of, and it's a good piece of advice for admins out there. Whenever you're creating any policies in Microsoft 365, you can do an awful lot of damage by just going click, click, click and switching this thing on. It can be an absolute nightmare. For example, conditional access could potentially lock global admins out and so on. So I'm, I'm a big fan of either running it in simulation mode um, or you can obviously activate it as well. Just to mind you, if you do run it in simulation mode, just like conditional access, it's in simulation for 90 days and then it would flip over and go live. Okay, um, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna click onto that and you can now see I've now created a site lifecycle management policy. Okay. Okay, for my number two, I'm gonna come in here into the access control tab. And as you can see, we have a number of options that were already here previously. So unmanaged devices, idle session timeouts, network locations, and of course, apps that don't use modern authentication, which aren't all important, of course. But we also have this new feature here for the pro version, and this is site level access restrictions. And what you can do here is just simply click this checkbox. And what this does, it then allows you to essentially control access to active sites by saying only administrators, so only global admins and SharePoint admins can have access to administer these uh, particular sites. And this can be particularly useful if you have kind of sensitive sites. So once I've activated that, I'm just gonna come up to active sites here. I'm gonna scroll down and I've got a site here. Let's say I'll use this one. It's called the Oslo Production. You can see that this particular site is also a Teams site. Um, I'm gonna come into the settings page here. And of course, these are all important settings, particularly things like sensitivity labels. I've not assigned a sensitivity label at the moment. One thing that you can also do is you can also block custom scripts here from running against that particular site. And you can see here that we have this pro version here, restricted site access. So at the moment, it's not uh, particularly set. So what I'm gonna do, as you can see, if you restrict access to this site, only Oslo production team owners and members listed on the membership will be able to access the content. Uh, other people won't be able to access shared site content. So even if you share it, uh, nobody else will be able to access this. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and restrict access to that particular site. And that's so important, you know, if you've got sensitive sites like HR, finance, you know, just content that you really just don't wanna share out there. And then essentially you just go ahead and you save that. And that's essentially how you control uh, restricted site access. So next, just a few kind of useful little things. Um, if you're familiar with containers in Microsoft Azure, then you'll notice that the containers menu has now come into SharePoint. So any containers that developers have containerized, for example, SharePoint instances, uh, you'll now see these here. I'm, I'm not using any of these at the moment, as you can see. 
The other thing that we can, we've also got, again, this is a, at the moment, this is a PowerShell script. We do expect this to be a UI feature in the not too distant future. Uh, and what this does is it block down, you've got this block download policy for SharePoint and OneDrive. And essentially it prevents downloads uh, for both external and internal users, which is actually really useful. Um, so, you know, you might give them access to something, but you don't want them actually making physical copies of it for obvious reasons. Um, the other thing that we've also got is you have a number of reports. So if you ever wanted to see, for example, who made changes to documents in a document library or in Teams, then this can be quite useful. So I can run a what we call a change history report. So again, I'm just going to click onto that. And it says, okay, I, do you want to do this for individual site um, changes or for the entire organization? So this changes um, kind of made to the organization settings, for example, by global admins, SharePoint admins for the last 180 days. Again, it could be malicious. It might not be, but it's always useful uh, from an auditing perspective to know what changes have been made. So click onto the organization settings and then suddenly click next. And then it says, okay, what do you want to uh, call your report? I'll just call this a uh, demo, of course. And you can see you can put in a time frame. So when do you want this report to uh, come in? So for example, if I'll, I'll just go back to, let's say the 1st of June or the 27th of June um, to today. Um, so, and you can see any changes, my global admins or just specific global admins. I suppose this might be quite useful if you're using things like Microsoft Purviews inside a risk management pre, uh, features. Um, I'm just going to choose all global admins just now and off it goes and it will generate that report. Now, again, uh, that can take a few minutes. You can see here there's a, there's a report. It doesn't really give me uh, much details, but it shows you kind of who created the report. And again, you can uh, uh, obviously create a copy of it. Um, there's not really any details there at the moment. Again, it can take a few minutes to compile that report. So as you can see, it can take a few hours to generate that report. Again, depending on how far you've gone back. But again, you may find that quite useful. So on the subject of reporting, if I come into the reporting area here, you can also see that we have a report called the Data Access Governance Report. And it's really important, especially for compliance reasons, that you know your data. So for example, who's sharing files, a complete list of all those shared files and shared folders, that would be really useful. And along with reports on who's applying sensitivity labels, for example. And you can see that we have a number of reports and you can build those out. So whoever's got sharing links here, you can see that at the moment, I've just got a couple of default ones. It shows me who's sharing this. I can click into that uh, and I can see if anybody's sharing. So one of the things you need to do is you need to run the report in order to get access to the data. Again, with reporting, it just can take a little bit of time uh, for this to uh, run. Um, once it's completed, again, then I'll just kind of refresh the page and you can see that the, it's running. Again, it might take, again, a few hours, depending on how big your organization is. It might just take a few minutes. All right. Um, just one thing just to mention while we're in the um, advanced management here, there are also some additional features to the likes of conditional access. I've done a lot of demos on conditional access recently, so I'll not bother with this one at the moment. But this is quite useful for things like uh, conditional access policies for SharePoint and OneDrive. And what these are, um, you can go to this document here on learn.microsoft.com. And this is particularly useful if you're using things like authentication context. And, and their example is quite good here. So things like sensitive information, you might create a terms of use for guest accounts so that they accept your terms and conditions. And when you publish the app, essentially what we're doing here is you can publish the app SharePoint 
um, but it's using this policy. So it's saying, okay, the user has to accept that those terms and conditions. So uh, again, really nicely explained here and along with kind of any limitations uh, that it has. So as I said, that the data access governance report, um, we'll let that run for a little bit, see what uh, comes out of it. And you've also got things like you can set default sensitivity labels as well. So you get some additional sensitivity labels um, in the uh, library panel, which I'll show you in a second. Um, one thing that you can also do is you can set some new OneDrive access restrictions. So you can do that and you can see here, I can configure, it shows you where you can do this. So uh, I'll go to that, for example. And it says here, okay, do you want to make any access restrictions? Um, so this allows users to, uh, in specific security groups, uh, to access OneDrive content. You can add up to 10 security groups. Um, and this is quite useful. So rather than assigning permissions to, uh, for example, Microsoft 365 groups, you can use those some security groups. So again, here uh, I can choose, let's say the Oslo admins group. Uh, I can also, let's say the um, Oslo, I've got some other groups here. I've got so uh, things like Oslo IT support. So these guys are gonna be responsible for kind of managing that. So restrict access to OneDrive. So any users who are not in these security groups uh, will lose access to OneDrive and any OneDrive files. This is a, a really quite a powerful feature. So as you can see, you've got to handle that carefully. All right, so that, as I said, is the kind of OneDrive uh, access feature there. So if I click into that, again, very powerful feature, use that carefully. Again, there's a document link there to learn.microsoft.com. So finally, just a few comments then. Um, you get a, a nice selection of tools. I really like the uh, site lifecycle management. Um, I like the um, uh, recent actions. I like the change history. That's really useful to know what happened. Um, there's data governance reporting, of course. You can also, the sensitivity labels if you've deployed them. And of course, you've got those conditional access updates. So it's a nice little package of updates. Honestly, you know, they could have probably included many of these features with the license. I'd love to know what you think about that. Um, but when we talk about the pricing of it, um, you can click on to this is what's required. Um, so there are a, a few kind of caveats in, you know, it tells you, you know, these few features, um, tells you about the licensing here. So typically it's a, how much is it going to cost? It's going to cost a, an, in the ballpark of $3 per month per user license. So it's in addition to whatever license you're using at the moment. $3 actually is not too bad, um, you know, for what you get. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens and how this evolves over a period of time. But anyway, drop your opinions below. So there you have it. I'd love to know what you think. That's uh, SharePoint Premium Advanced Management. So there you have it. SharePoint Advanced Management. Pretty cool stuff. Hey, listen, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, bump the like button up there. It does make a difference to the channel. And if you've not subscribed, well, hell, come on on board. Come and join our learning community. Bump that subscribe button up there. And if you've got questions and comments, as always, get them down below. That's it for this time. I'll see you soon. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.